Hello. This is the first episode of a new series of videos in which I will take a look at marvelous scientific ideas and technologies that have been developed by ingenious men who were way ahead of their time. Welcome to Science History. Since I recently visited a museum in which numerous historical calculating devices and machines were displayed, this will be the topic for the first few videos. In the first episodes I will talk about Napier's bones, Schickard's counter and calculating devices, the Pascaline by Blaise Pascal, Leibniz decimal calculating machine, the basics of binary calculation and Leibniz binary calculating machine as well as Newton's method. So let's start right away. Napier's bones or Napier's rods is a device with which the multiplication of large numbers can be accomplished by very simple means. Let me just show you how it works with the help of this model from the museum. We start with something simple. Let's say we want to multiply 5000 by 5. What we do is that we order the rods by the numbers on the top so that we have a 5000 right here. Now we go to row 5 because we want to multiply by 5. And you can simply read off the result. As expected it is 25,000. Now let's try something more complicated. What about 570,833 times 6? In this case you have to add the digits which share a common diagonal column. The numbers which you cannot see because of the reflection are another 1 and 8. You can now start to read off the result. You start with the least significant digit on the right hand side and proceed to the left. The first digit is an 8. 8 plus 1 makes 9. And another 9. 0 plus 4 equals 4. And 2 plus 0 is 2. Another 4 plus 0 equals 4. And the last number is a 3. That gives us the overall result, which is 3,424,998. You don't believe it? Well, let's just verify this result by using a modern calculator. And ta-da, it worked just fine. Now, you might say, okay, but only one of the numbers is really big. What if I want to multiply with a number bigger than 9? Well, there is a way. Let's say, instead of calculating 570,833 times 6, we will now try 570,833 times 236. What you do now is the following. Take the rows 2, 3 and 6 and order them in this way. What I do in this animation would of course normally have to be done by writing the rows down on a piece of paper. Now you again simply add the numbers that share a common diagonal column. By the way, if there are free spaces on the rods, they stand for a zero. You can add them if you like. The first number is an 8. 8 plus 1 plus 9 equals 18. That means that you can write down an 8 and have to carry over a 1. 1 plus 8 plus 1 plus 9 plus 0 plus 6 equals 25. That means that you can write down a 5 and carry over a 2. And you simply proceed in this way until you reach the last diagonal column. The overall result is then 134 million 716,588. And again, let's back this result up by using a modern calculator. And it worked out just fine. So, as you can see, this method can be used as an alternative to long multiplication, which you might know from school. Since I really like this tool, I will now show you how you can make some Napier's bones for yourself at home. Later, I will also show you how you could use this tool in a practical electrical engineering application. All you need for this project is an old cardboard box, a knife, a pencil and optionally some glue. You cut out a piece of cardboard from the box. I used a piece with 35 cm by 25 cm. You can use any size, but this one works well for me. On the cardboard you draw a rectangle with a height that can easily be divided by 9. I choose 18 cm of height and 28 cm of width since it is a multiple of 2. Now you can draw 10 parallel horizontal lines on the right side of the outer frame and through the entire inner rectangle. 
which creates nine rows of same size. Then you add vertical lines inside the rectangle so that squares of 2 by 2 cm are created. Now you can number the rows on the frame. After doing that, you should now cut out the inner rectangle and separate it from the frame. Then you number the vertical columns. You go from 1 to 9 and add another column for the number 0. You can leave all the remaining fields free for now. After doing that, you draw diagonal lines through all of the squares. And for doing the next steps, you can put the rectangle inside the frame again. What you do now is that you basically fill all the fields with numbers. The numbers are the product of the column with a corresponding row. Or in other words, you fill in the numbers of the 101, while the single figures of each number are separated by the diagonal lines. So you have 1 times 2 equals 2 and 1 times 3 equals 3 and so forth. In this way, you complete basically the entire 101 except the multiples of 10. In addition, you fill all the fields of the zero column with zeros. After having completed that task, you can now cut out your Napier's bones alongside the vertical lines. The remaining columns are cut out too. You can later label them to make additional rods if certain figures are needed for more than one time in a number. In general, you can make as many rods as you want in not just one set. The sky is the limit. After cutting out the rods, you can optionally glue the outer frame on top of another stiff piece of cardboard, which provides a rigid base in which the rods can later be placed while doing calculations. Now, of course, what I have created here is not exactly a thing of beauty, but you could apply this method to wooden or metal parts in the exact same way. You could also build three-dimensional rods that would carry the multiples of different figures on each side, as I have seen in the museum. But now I want to show you an example for a practical application of Napier's bones. Let's say you experiment with self-made small-scale wind turbines like I did in the last year. Let's say then that you measured the power of the turbine's generator for a couple of days and now you want to know how much electrical energy the turbine could deliver over the course of an entire year. Be aware though that this example is very idealized and we simply assume that the velocity of the wind, the outside temperature and humidity of the air stays roughly constant over the entire course of the year. The overall amount of energy that would be produced by the generator would be the mean output power times the time of one year delta t. The average year has a length of 365.25 days, while each day has 24 hours. That gives us E total equals P times 365.25 times 24 hours. Now let's say that the mean output power that you measured was 13.13 watts. With that we get E total equals 13.13 times 365.25 times 24 hours. Now because I want to use Napier's bones to do this calculation, I will now use powers of 10 to get rid of the decimal points. E total equals then 1313 times 10 to the power of minus 2 watts times 36,525 times 10 to the power of minus 2 times 24 hours. That is the same as 1313 times 36,525 times 24 times 10 to the power of minus 4 watt hours, which equals 36,525 times 24 times 1313 times 10 to the power of minus 7 kilowatt hours. I shifted the order of the numbers so that they represent the order in which you will use Napier's bones. 10 to the power of minus 4 watt hours equals 10 to the power of minus 7 kilowatt hours because the letter K means nothing else than 1000 or 10 to the power of 3. Now all we have to do is to calculate the sum of the three numbers with the help of Napier's bones. Then we will use the power of 10 to retrieve the decimal point. The first multiplication is 36,525 times 24. First, I place the rods inside the frame. For this calculation, I need a second number 5 bone. Now you have to take row 2 and 4 and write them down like this. And you can start calculating. The first number is a 0. 
8 plus 2 is a 10, that means write a 0 down and carry over a 1. 1 plus 4 plus 1 is a 6 and you go on like that as we did before. The result is 876,600. We can now write that down and we can proceed to the second multiplication. For that we again place the rods in the right order into the frame. This time I need two number 6 and two zero rods. As you can see you will need more than one set of bones for most calculations. Now you take a look at row 1 and 3. But if the factor has the figure 1 in it, the rows have to be rewritten first. You simply take the numbers and divide the fields with a diagonal line. Now you can start adding and carrying again as we did before. It really is super easy. The final result is 1,150,975,800. Now we can write that down and the only thing left is to retrieve the decimal point. Since the large number has to be multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 7, you simply move 7 places from the right end of the number and place the point right there. So the end result is that the wind turbine would produce 115.09758 kilowatt hours in the time of one sidereal year. To verify the result, let us use the calculator for a last time. And of course it worked. Please notice again that it would of course not make any sense to calculate this value for a wind turbine with so many places behind the decimal point, since in reality it would not be possible to predict the wind speeds and other important factors beforehand, not even close. This example only served the purpose to show how you could use Napier's bones for a practical application. I also wanted to show you that you can use it to calculate the sum of two factors with any given number of places behind the decimal point. And of course many of you will think that a primitive technique like this is useless in the age of the smartphone. But I like to think that I could calculate values with many places behind the decimal point only by using cardboard, a knife and a pencil. Furthermore, Napier's bones can also be used as an alternative for long division and also for calculating square roots. The inventor himself, John Napier of Murchiston, was a Scottish mathematician and physicist. He lived from 1550 to 1617 and made several major contributions to the science of mathematics. His most famous invention were the logarithms. He was also known by the name Naper and you will find an auxiliary unit called Naper in some older books. That unit however has been replaced by the decibel in most fields. A German astronomer by the name Wilhelm Schickert was known to be the inventor of a mechanical calculating device which was based on Napier's bones. But about the calculating devices and machines of Schickert, Pascal and Leibniz you will hear in the next episode. So if you like this video, please watch my other videos and please subscribe to my channel.